We say baseball fans, Rye Bread talking baseball, episode 24. Well, 2 4, high school digits. Took a bad beat yesterday. Naughty Brewers. My pick in the central. You're supposed to be nice to me. But the Brewers are looking for a sweep now. Didn't see that coming. Came all the way back and extra sent me to bed unhappy last night, Brewers. But it was still an exciting game. Through the frustration of me trying to flip back and forth in between these awesome games on MLB TV's just ancient platform. It's so tired. It's old. The technology to have your game in the middle, a bunch of other games going on around it or in a grid format, that's been around for like 10 years. They're an easy 10 years late on their platform. Easy. And it's so frustrating. But tonight, there's another matchup starting today and then finishing tonight. Trevor Rogers, the pitcher for the Marlins, has been lighting the league on fire. He's excellent. Scherzer has the name, but not the performance to back it up thus far in the season. And the number reflects Scherzer's name, not his performance. So you get the Marlins plus 133. And I think they want to avoid that sweep. I, I like that number. And then I look down tonight's game, Zach Eflin hosting the Mets. David Peterson is by far the weakest member of the Mets starting staff. The Mets have amazing pitching. This is your chance to really get at the Mets. And even though Peterson looked great against Philadelphia last time out, six innings, win, 10 Ks, no walks. Remember that Philadelphia team of a couple weeks ago? It's not like the one we're seeing now. It's a completely different team. They're hitting the ball extremely well now. Philly's been knocking the cover off the ball in some of these games. And I expect that they win tonight. The number has already moved 10 points. It was minus 118. Now it's 109. I think it's going to be positive before you know it. But right now, when I got it anyway, it's 347. Plus 347 if you take the Marlins and the Phillies in a two-team parlay. Plus 347 is a big number. And I'm not going to bet every day, but when there's a big number like this, it's just small stakes just to have something invested in it because anybody can come and get in front of a camera and spout off some picks. I realize it's a small amount of money, but I'm not going to come in here and just spout off my picks without at least putting something there. And it's just for fun. And I like to see how the numbers play out. Philly has to be hungry after last night. That call on Andrew McCutcheon where he's running straight to second base and gets called for interference and then out. It is absolutely the next rung in the ladder of MLB setting a new standard for ineptitude. Every night, something bad. Tonight's game in Philadelphia, I'm more likely to see a wonky strike zone or a terrible call than I am a clean called game where I don't even notice the umpires. And we've said it before. We're going to have to come to the fact that the realization that these umpires are going to insert themselves into the game. We have to find a way to do that constructively because the day of the umpire just hiding in the background is over. They want to be part of it and they're not going to be denied. And until we start using this replay as a tool rather than the enemy, we're going to have big problems, fundamental problems. If the umpires are able to correct their own calls with the easy technology available just right here, and then you grade them based on their accuracy and they can correct their own calls after where there's no showing up and just their score is not based at all on their initial call. Their score is determined by the accuracy of the final outcome. And then playoff assignments are assigned accordingly. The strike zone, you can see where you're missing. The strike zone is only scored on the zone not the individual consistency of an individualized strike zone of an umpire. These are fundamental issues that are easily solved. But I've spent too much time on the umpires already. But it led me to believe that Philly's going to be hungry tonight, and I expect they win that game. Hopefully, the Marlins get me there so I can have a little extra spice, but it's five bucks. But it's something. The action is going to settle out here. We've got accounts due. Eight teams looking for a sweep, or to avoid a sweep, depending on your perspective. Milwaukee, New York, Baltimore, Houston, Washington, Toronto, San Diego, and St. Louis. 
all looking for sweeps. That's the Yankees over the Tigers. <clears throat> you got to say that Milwaukee is an unlikely addition to this list, looking for a four-game sweep at the Dodgers. But three of these, Washington, San Diego, St. Louis, division matchups. You want to move the needle in your division, sweep your division opponent in series. That's how you move the needle. And then Baltimore and Houston are looking for series sweeps, and that's uh, in line with our East-West showdown. Oakland and Tampa Bay took a lot out of each other because both of those teams are struggling. Oakland and uh, Tampa Bay have a grand total of zero wins in the four games <laughs> since they've met. So Baltimore's making everybody look bad. And Houston just looks so tough. And they've got Christian Javier going against Rich Hill today. It's likely, I think, that, the, that Houston sweeps their way out of town here. The Rays are not hitting. Now, I'm not pushing the panic button on the Rays, but they're just not hitting right now. They're in last place in the East where they belong. But it's close and it's not over. It's just they're not playing well. The East-West shakeout continues over there in Boston. Same thing. Boston is playing at Texas, right? They have a chance to get three of four or get a split. Now, getting three of four on its own is great, but you start to get three of four throughout the season rather than two two splits that's how you push your wind count into the 90s and boston looks like the favorite for the al east right now i'm making my picks for all the divisions tomorrow but right now it looks like boston's my team there so if they get three instead of two consistently that's how you win your division and get in the playoffs so boston's taking care of their business while the rays and oakland falter and then the rubber match today, Angels at Seattle. We've got five rubber matches, all within division. Mets at Phillies, Cubs at Reds, Indians at White Sox, Royals at Twins, Angels at Mariners. That's five division matchups that the series winner is going to be decided today. And we've said it. If you want to win your division, win your series. And that has to happen today for, I think, Seattle and Minnesota particularly. Philadelphia is going to be my pick in the East. But after last night's debacle, I just think they're hungry. I think Eflin's going to win that game. I put my money where my mouth is on Philly tonight. But those five division tilts, Mets, Phillies, Cubs, Reds, Cleveland, Chicago, Royals, Minnesota, and <clears throat> Angels, Mariners, those are the games you have to win if you want to win your division. And then the last team that we haven't mentioned yet is Arizona at Colorado. Arizona keeps winning. And again, for them, the difference between a 3-1 and a 2-2 at Colorado is big. They need 3-1s in Colorado. Because the Dodgers are going to pull 3-1s in Colorado. The Giants are going to pull 3-1s in Colorado. The Padres are going to pull 3-1s in Colorado. Padres looking for a big sweep of the Giants. And we mentioned that at the beginning that we expected the Padres to play inspired at home. They have been. It's fun to see. Giants have been in it, but Padres at home is just a tough beat. And the Brewers look tough. Now you understand why the Padres got knocked around by the Brewers, huh? Look what the Brewers are doing to the Dodgers with everybody on the I.L. Yelich isn't even playing. The Dodgers didn't even face Burns. The Brewers are tough, man. The Brewers look good. That's going to about do it for us today. I don't want to get too negative on those umpires, but something has to change, my goodness. Thanks again for tuning in. If you're at the TROP, don't forget, Bascom's Chop House is in Clearwater, Florida. It's 15 minutes away. Best steak in the city. Best wine list in the city. Tell them I sent you. You won't be disappointed. Get at me on Twitter, at RyeBread0844. Get with me tomorrow. I'm going to do a 162.